Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Republican Representative Ken Skaronsky of Franklin is seeking re-election in the 82nd Assembly District. Ken, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Well, it's a pleasure, always. You're going for a third term, yes, so sir. here's my question. What, if you're re-elected, is going to be your top goal, your top priority in the next session? Well, it's as I'm very involved with the veterans. Yes. I'm very involved with the elderly. And, of course, I sit on transportation, which is everybody's famous for. So, uh, and health care. But uh, right now, the veterans uh, have a very uh, number one spot to take care of them. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, part of it, plus many other things. So. Biggest change that would help our veterans that you're pushing for in the next session? The, uh, the support for the families, that when they come back, the veteran takes care, but we got to make sure that the families, the husband or the wife and the children, are taken care of when they're deployed and when they get back, uh -huh. and their health care along with it. That has to be a very number one priority to get those things taken care of. You also mentioned transportation. Yes, sir. We're at gridlock in the Capitol on how we pay for our highway, bridge, construction, maintenance, future. Uh -huh. How would you like this gridlock resolved? What's your plan to pay for our highways? Uh, boy, that's a, that's, you could get a million answers and probably half of them are not going to be popular. But I'm not for uh, raising the gas tax. You're not? Okay. No, no sir. About uh, the $75 you and I pay to register our car. Uh, well, that might be something. But the thing is, we're not the only ones that use roads. We have a lot of out-of-state transport, uh, tourism and everything else. Yep. And that's a big item on the roads. So how do we get them to give help to pay for those roads uh, in our state? Because I think our road system is pretty good, although we have four seasons. We have, you know, summer, winter, fall, su uh, spring, but uh, the weather doesn't take it easy on us. And when the roads pop up and the potholes are there, you got to get out there and take care of them. So it's a, a maintenance is very important, and you have to have a good maintenance program. When tolling is mentioned <coughs> in the Capitol, what's what's your feeling? I r right now I don't think it's work. Uh, it'll work here. Illinois sure has it, but they've had it for a long time. To look into that and put that expenditure in, where do you start? you'd have to go to all the entries of our state in order to be equal to it. Uh, and uh, I don't think that's in the ballgame. You mentioned health care. Let me ask, how do we protect and maybe expand health care in rural <coughs> Wisconsin, rural Wisconsin? Well, I, I think uh, EMTs and service centers for people that they don't have to go to three counties over to get that health care. Uh, the elderly, uh, because they're going to need assistance somehow to get there. That's another thing that goes to it. So how can we maybe more centralize in a area that where they live that makes it easier for them to get there? And I think that should be uh, a thing that should be looked at very much so. Are you hearing from hospitals in uh, your area and other medical providers that Wisconsin has too low Medicaid reimbursement rates? Are we at a tipping point where that threatens care under our Medicaid program? Has this, has this issue come up, Ken? Uh, just briefly, when I talk to the seniors, uh, but there, for some reason, it, it doesn't become monumental unless you get a group that has had a problem. Those are the ones that you hear a lot for, and then you sit down. And when I go to all the uh, seniors' meetings, the luncheons, and things like that, I sit down with them and say, hey, tell me, what, what do you need? What do you help? I'm here to listen and then try and solve a problem or concerns that they have. Uh, and that's the most important, because if you don't hear what's out there, how are you going to assist and do something about it? What's the number one issue that they say when you ask them? Tell me about health care. Well, they, they want to make sure that the pre-existing condition is there. And I think the, the governor has done a great job in making sure that, and the lieutenant governor, we want to make sure pre-existing stay in uh, because we don't want to be cut off because we had one and then all of a sudden you don't have it anymore. And there's a lot of very serious stuff. You need that assistance. Have you followed this pilot program with state government and Delta Dental that provides dental care to low-income in regional clinics? 
Have you followed that at all? No, I haven't. Not okay. that much. But, you know, the old story is uh, there is nothing front, uh, free today. You have to, uh, everything has to be paid for. Okay. But you uh, want to make it moderate. AARP estimates that 578,000 Wisconsin residents are caregivers. Uh -huh. Have you heard from caregivers th that we need a law or rules that require hospitals to recognize and work with family caregivers when a loved one is hospitalized? Has this come up? Oh, well, it has come up, and that's something I'm going to be looking at for the next legislative system. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm well aware of it. I think the caregiver has to be compensated because it's still very cheap for a caregiver of a family to take care of them at home rather than put them in an institution or a care facility. Local governments have been living with levy limits for 13, 14 years to control property taxes. Correct. You probably have heard some local officials say, hey, this hurts, levy limits hurt our ability to provide local services. Mm -hmm. Keep levy limits, dial them back, loosen them, or get rid of them? Oh, I think, I, I represent three communities. I represent Franklin, Greendale, and uh, a third of Greenfield. And they all have a little bit difference on their opinions with the elected officials. So. Uh, it'd be kind of hard for me to say one thing is going to fit all. Yeah. Uh, so I would hate to comment on something that I don't have, have a full knowledge of to talk to them now that we're, we're looking at because their budgets are going to be affected by it. Um, you voted for the package of Foxconn tax benefits and tax breaks, and now Kimberly Clark wants those. Mm -hmm. When should state government come out and offer major tax breaks like that to private companies? Well, you know, everything is, uh, I don't think you can compare Foxconn to Kimberly Clark. Kimberly yeah. Clark has been in this uh, Wisconsin for what, over 100 years. They've yes. been around here. Uh, Foxconn is a whole new industry. It's a whole new thing. And when you're bidding and asking for major industries to come to this state, I have to uh, admire the, the president, Paul Ryan, the governor, on all their hard work in order to get that industry here. But it's a bidding war. You have to show that you're going to be there to support them. But yet you still have to look at the people that are having a problem. But Kimberly Clark has had a problem for quite a while. And I know they have to adjust. And you don't want to see that industry go away because there was it. There's one that's three, 300 and the other one 500 employees. Okay. You got to make sure that you can keep those. Those families need support. You voted for a budget, a state budget, that uh, included about $600 million more in state aid for our K-12 public schools. Correct. When local superintendents, local principals, local teachers say, thank you, but we need another big increase in the next budget, do we? No, I, I look at it, we gave you that a lot of money to, to help you and support you, and a lot of it is safety and things, but they have to be take ownership of their own circumstances. They have to look at, get the fat out where it don't belong, get down to the core property of, you're there for education. That starts right at the superintendent of the schools, right at the state and all the way down and monitor it and making sure that that money is spent, it's taxpayer money, to making sure that that's where it's supposed to go. And you look at the disparity between the bigger city, Milwaukee, and what those kids and how they come out to some of the other ones that are doing excellent. I have to say my three school districts are excellent and what they do, they're high rated. And, but you gotta look, and again too, it comes down to the family. How is the family engaged in making sure their kids are well educated and they have to get up and say, hey, either you guys are not doing it because my kid still comes home and he's not picking up any intelligence. He's, uh, and sometimes you look at all these little computers and everything don't help much either making sure that they do your homework, do stuff like that. The choice, the voucher program has been expanded. Mm -hmm. Started out in Milwaukee, as you know, then we're seeing now it's statewide. Mm -hmm. Does it need to be expanded further or do you want to hold it where it is now? I have to look into that a little more. Uh, I haven't been addressed too heavily by any of my districts. I think it's important it, it has a purpose. Um, and until I start digging into it, because I've had so much on my plate right now, uh, I wouldn't want to come and see something that isn't correct. A big issue in the next budget is the Department of Corrections. Mm -hmm. um, we have two prisons built in the 1800s in Waupun and Green Bay. Mm -hmm. Do you think we need a new state prison? I do. I think it has to be uh, brought up to, to snuff on these prisons. I have the House of Correction in my, in my area in Franklin. 
So I'm well aware, uh, aware of the prison. Some people want to close that house of corrections. I know it, and I don't think it should. I think they should use it and utilize it properly. And then you got the one in Milwaukee is another one. So, uh, but I think the prison system has to be updated. I, I agree 100%. You just can't look at buildings that are 100 years old and stuff like this. You got to modernize them. And again, you know, there's unfortunately the crime is not getting any less. It's out there. Uh, but you have to, that all starts from the judicial system and things of this. And when you have uh, seasoned criminals that get out with a hand slap and then they do something again and come back in, uh, that's not right. If they're uh, a criminal and they get sentenced, there's none of this, well, you get out in a year or two because society, again, does not benefit. They, they're on the short end of things happen. Well, look at the shootings that keep happening. We never had that uh, in my age and uh, even all the way down, uh, and that's a shame. And when uh, families have to worry about it in central cities uh, on that stuff, it, it's terrible. It's really UW funny. system budget. We've had a freeze on resident undergraduate tu tuition for six mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. The governor liked the freeze to continue for a seventh and eighth year. Do you agree with him? Yes, I do. I do very much so. Okay. The bills in the Capitol that would legalize recreational and medical marijuana. Your your position? Well, I I. I'm getting educated more and more on it. If there is any uh, legalization of medical marijuana, it really has to be scrutinized because you don't want something falling through the cracks on the dispensing of it. And that's where I think some things that you can't let go. You know, but again, I'm learning on it a little more to, uh, to see and how it would be addressed. But you're not yet there no, legalizing. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm still trying to get a little more educated on it. You want to highlight differences between you and your opponent on November 6th? Ken? Well, I don't have an opponent. You don't? No. <laughs> I, I have a, a gentleman that has uh, put his name in, but uh, uh, he's non-existent. And I, have, were not, I was not uh, opposed last term at all. Yeah. And uh, I'm running on my record, and I have uh, tremendous support. So I just keep going and stay uh, very... in. Uh, with my community, uh, with my events, and I have tremendous support. Okay. Republican Representative Ken Skronsky of Franklin seeking re-election in the 82nd Assembly District. Ken, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. It's always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.